17 of my 2022 Christmas Village full tutorial series. For once, I will try to keep my word and finish this new building, this new feature, this third new feature dedicated to another Victorian era novelist. This scary building in the next few hours will become even more scarier and simply because Tomorrow night, it will be Halloween, at least for me. We live in different time zones, guys, luckily for me. And so this will be completed, and especially with something that is missing up here, that it will make the difference. And by the way, I told you that for real fans of this uh, novelist, this will be too easy to figure out and congratulations to those of you who have figured it out. The first was the team Bofema that got it correctly just some minutes after watching part uh, 16. Uh, for the others you have to wait for the end of this part 17 when I will reveal everything about it. Uh, and for the others, just go. They don't want to wait, it, just go see the comments uh, to part uh, 16. And then, guys, then some more buildings. It is still too naked, and we'll add some more buildings. But each time I glue something, and in this case, I glued some more uh, wall paper there, not wallpaper as the wallpaper you use in your bedroom, guys. but a paper that has a wall pattern on <laughs> it. Sorry, I'm stupid. Um, and then everything else also. I have a wall now. So it's like saying, okay, now it's really a wall, it's not styrofoam. Uh, people need to get access to the next level, people need to climb over it. They don't want to be isolated. It's time to add the stairs. Do I, do I use the new type, the first type, some other types I developed in past season? No. I'm mad for stairs, I'm crazy for stairs, so I developed a new, another new type of stairs. Um, still need to paint some little details because everything else is already done, uh, not made, not handmade. Yes, I made it, uh, drawing it on my 3D software, but I printed it because it has a complex form, very difficult to uh, replicate uh, simply by hand. Possible, yes, very long, but I don't have too much time. It will be easy to uh, build it in four to six hours, but I had not at my disposal at that time. I need to concentrate on something else, so I 3D printed it. Uh, design it, model it, yes, but then 3D printed, but I will explain that it is very simple. And new type of stairs, yes, then some of you suggested to add some kind of new props here for the, um, for the three ring circles, but what, because guys, it is impossible to represent all uh, all the circles in just a three ring circles under a dome you have three attractions now but the circus has dozens of attractions I will certainly not be able to represent all of them in this small space but the other attractions need some kind of space some kind of a training art area area sorry and so I will try to put them here uh, Circus like are like that. You need to wait for each attraction to be completed for the next one to uh, come to the to the stage. It's impossible, but I want to, you to get the essence of a circus with all the other figurines I printed. 
no more fences up there because they're still dry. I painted, I primed them, but this is very long. Each single uh, segment of the fences for the scriptorium up there take six to seven hours to print. Very long time because very complex challenge. Enough. Let's get to work on this new scary building. Bye. Good guys, before going ahead with this building, let me talk briefly to you about two little surprises. Maybe you remember that I went uh, some weeks ago to Perraga for my annual trip to my preferred and beloved Christmas Village Department store or Christmas Department store if you prefer. And that uh, uh, I had found what I was searching to implement my um, North Pole section, my Santa's Wonderland section. Those were little buildings, Elf Lane little buildings. In fact, Peraga had, had just two of them on catalog. It was building one and three, if I'm correct. Uh, on a total of four uh, buildings and they weren't the good looking ones the one has a little uh, shaped as a little uh, red Santa's boot and then another one very very strange I was searching for the other two because I judged them much more good looking but uh, they, they are not it so Maybe because they, they finish it very soon, because they are, they are really a beautiful form. I know that I don't like very much the, Wonder, the Santa's Wonderland collection because mainly the buildings are made out of poly resin, so they are translucent and I hate translucent buildings. But yesterday uh, I went uh, to the other store, the little one, the, one that is uh, near me, where I generally buy my rock paper because they have a very good uh, rock paper brand and surprise, 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 I found all the four all the four um, Elf Lane buildings it is the first time in history that Lemax, Lemax put on the market something that has no packaging uh, yes, they have a little uh, shelf, a little um, cardboard shelf to present it to, to uh, possible customers, or you may simply put them on your on your store shelves. But there, surprise to surprise, I found all four of them. Obviously, I both only the two I was searching for. And surprise, second surprise is also that they aren't totally um, polyresin. They also have porcelain. This is the first one. I will not do a, a, quick, a full review, guys, but because those are standalone uh, buildings sold for the first time by Lemax with without the packaging, as I told you. But here, this is porcelain. This is plastic polyresin and you can feel it simply by touching the material. Polyresin tends to generally be hotter than um, porcelain that is cold. So this is porcelain, this is porcelain, the base is plastic and the chin here is polyresin. So not that translucent. So this is building Elf Lane 4. Small dimensions, yes, because this is intended for elves. No packaging at all. Uh, this is cute, guys. And another time, yes, this is modeled with a curved Chinese uh, roofs. I am uh, sorry, guys, for that. But in this case, it gives it as it is way more accentuated than the normal, uh, normal, uh, at least a decent look. Some uh, pointy um, door, uh, door entrance there that may remember you uh, as ears, pointy uh, ears, or maybe 
work and years if you are if you are Star Trek fans or also Romanans. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, sorry guys. But this is Evelyn number four. Very interesting. It it is uh, it is good looking guys. This was absolutely uh, well very well uh, accepted. This is item two four. Uh, no. Yes, this is two four zero twelve twenty twenty two Limax Incorporated. Maybe I can approach the camera. Everything is written here because no notice will come with this. This works with a 3 volt uh, flat battery, a CR2032 battery, standard battery, the same you have seen me using or uh, getting out from my uh, T uh, lights used for the um, flickering wall to watch. It has a big giant red switch on, switch off button, but it, has, it also can accommodate some. Um, um, plug for a 3 volt AC adapter. Something I don't like is that you have a screw there to secure the cap, the battery cap, and each time you will need to uh, to remove the um, to remove the uh, to unscrew the screw before removing the cap and replacing the battery. Even if they wrote here 4.5 volts there, it uses a 3 volt, uh, a three volt uh, battery right there. Effect, guys, let's just me plug this in and simply switch it on. It simply has an LED, a, a yellowish LED inside in the base and simply some little windows to watch through it one window two window three and then on the back nothing four five so one two three four five windows and nothing else some steps snow on the roof some little red oh sorry little red flowers on off i will use it like this enough for this one then the, the center of the Elf Lane buildings. Elf Lane 2, guys. What well, this is, and please, here. Guys, it has, it has also a sound movement, even if it, because this collection, I uh, always remember you that this collection is intended for, for also, uh, uh, as, as toys for kids, this is sound also. But look at the shape, rounded with an elf um, hat, an elf cap on top, as a roof with some belts here to to securing the roof to the rest of the building. Very roundy with these I don't know elf uh, elf hat. Yes, but also it can resemble some. A joker ad green red this is beautiful maybe the, the door is too little there not escape a Christmas a tree and everything else. this is the center of this elf lane collection and look two and four elf lane four elf lane two and one and three were the unlucky unlucky ones but this is wonderful. This is item 24010, 2022 Limax Lamax Incorporated. As some notice the same principle and inside another LED, guys. But you also have a little scene on the window, a couple of little uh, elves uh, drinking and having fun during the Christmas uh, time. One, two, three, four, five windows also in here, but this is absolutely wonderful. This is what attracted me first when I saw this new uh, collection, this new edition, and this is, okay, I must have that little guy. And these two, it is, the roof here is polyresin, guys, but the base here, as it is 
called uh, it. The base is uh, ceramic and the roof here is uh, polyresin, it sounds differently. And then uh, here, once again, some uh, porcelain, uh, very strange to mix porcelain and and plastic and polyresin, but they, they did it like this. And guys, the, the bricks, even the bricks here, this is a very good piece. Smaller than everything else, but F's are smaller than anything else. Maybe you judge me crazy. Maybe you love it. I don't know, but those will be the addiction. And those were placed like that on the shelves. I did. So let me have this one and then the other one and the other two. Sorry, guys. It's for next time. Good. This is done, guys. Let's talk... Serious. <laughs> I'm all that serious, guys. Building. Uh, before proceeding, some with having some very powerful colors, uh, some black wash, yes, some a little of black and plenty of water for this building here to get a proper base. Uh, also uh, from the inside. And then I will paint it a strange color, at least for me a strange color, and then add a couple of sliding doors there. Let's go, black wash. Let's start from the back here, yes. So water, plenty of water, a little of, um, a little of water, plenty of black. And let's go with blood washing everything as I usual do. And this is, you have seen this many, many times. So maybe I will do, I will start with this and then skip, uh, let's say, half an hour from now. No, let's say an hour from now when everything will be dried and black washed. This is standard. My intent is to get every, every ridge, every uh, groove very, very dark. Uh, and the difference in core uh, in, uh, from the bricks here, that this one was cut uh, in some other ways than the others. So, uh, fast forward. Okay, one hour and ten minutes later, guys. I know that uh, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to fill in the ridges, the, the groove with some black wash because inside those grooves, those ridges, you have PVC glue. At least I have PVC glue, and PVC glue wash out everything you put on it, it's like painting on some plastic, on some very slippery plastic. So sometimes it is impossible to get what you want to get. But this is the result, the black wash result, guys, and some minutes of drying. Now, I will start from the back here, because I'm gonna experiment right now. You know what I what colors I use generally blacks, uh, grays, uh, brown, green, and so on. Except for the figurines where I use all the colors, but for buildings I use mainly those colors: white, black, brown, uh, gray, uh, green, and and so on. Because uh, colors tend to be washed out by time. So when I build something ancient, it's always washed out by time. By water, yes, but especially by the sun. The sun eat every color. Just leave something in plain sun just for a week. Take two identical items, maybe two packaging, identical packaging, and 
uh, one keep it inside and the other one leave it on plain sun for uh, a week, for an entire week. <laughs> when you compare the two of them, the, the ones that has been on the, uh, under the sun has already started losing some of its colors. Uh, it has always been that uh, sun more than uh, water, than rain, than water and salt together uh, eat every um, every uh, color. And the stones generally are grey and painted or marble is white. And then uh, it is dirt, uh, it is black, white, the dirt, etc. So. Let me experiment. Why I'm saying that I'm experimenting right now? But because I'm going with shades of red. This needs to be old, yes. This needs to be not old or so. This needs to be scary. This needs to attract the attention of what or of who. I will tell you in my final recap. But these need to attract attention and not using grey obviously because grey or black doesn't attract attention but red, purple, etc. No, not light purple. So I will go with shades of red but I sincerely don't know the result right now. Let me do a mix here. Let me mix some burnt sienna brown. I've never used this one before, it's new for me. I generally use uh, uh, not sienna but uh, brown or um, burnt brown. This is too much, too much. Um, brown okay and then I will go some uh, let me go with this is maroon a little of maroon Yesterday I lost a battle Trying that I'll call so To keep you, baby Oh, to keep you, baby Do, do, do Now I hurt so bad All I feel is sad that I lost you, baby Oh, I lost you, baby I said goodbye With tears inside Calling out your Let's try this. Always using dry brushing technique. So dry brushing this. Let's see what I can get dry brushing. I need to work on standing up. Okay, let's check.
Okay, then this is the first shade. Some minutes of dry time. Then I will go with a little very light uh, layer or coat if you prefer of a, a lighter red. But this has already started to change. Look at the difference between the side here completely and here with all the different shades of gray, black and, uh, and red. So, but I need, I also had to switch to a bigger um, brush because those are too little, at least for the first coat, first layer. Some minutes of dry time. Good, let's go with this one here. with this other. I always use for this kind of painting the hardest possible brushes I have. Let's see with this clear. Okay, some white and this brush has always been my dry white brush, white dry brush. I only use it with white paint. Uh, it's always better like that. White is too important. So it needs to be done like that. Just a little touch of white let's see vertical this time And that's all guys, I don't want to, and also I don't need to exaggerate with white. This will be my process for all the other walls. Uh, black wash, this mix here for the base, dry brush it, then a quick layer of this color here that is primary red than this brilliant red. It is called by that, but it is an orange red, I think. Final touch, some white, very quickly done. So I will proceed with all the other walls and look at the difference, this with this, then the top, then maybe something, because I don't like this goldish yellow, dirt there, I don't know yet, but let me proceed with all the other walls like that, then a quick update before doing the the sliding doors there, that will not be open, be closed, sliding doors.
off. Okay, guys, good. Uh, sorry, I don't have any more my coat with me because I had a little accident and I poured a lot of red on my coat, on my, uh, my, uh, on my everything. So right now it is in the washing machine. Then it will pass into the dryer. But uh, I'm not used to work without my coat. I just have a, a sweatshirt line now. Um, so, final result, 1 hour and 35 minutes later, this is the result, I added some more red on the top, not that much because anyway this will be covered under 90% by something else, no let's say 70% and I'm looking towards the right because that thing is, is there, yes, 70%. Not that red as you may, uh, may have thought, uh, might have thought, sorry, but this is the result. Three layers, I left you with this layer done, this back done, with all the red and the white, and this is the result from all the other words. I will not paint the inside, because uh, anyway, this will not be visible from the outside, everything will be closed with the sliding doors, no windows, no lights inside, nothing and nothing. Uh, white, not that much because I don't want to cover all the red or the different shades of red, but this will be a frightening building with the top adding, when I will add the top. Uh, so now I will do the sliding doors there. Uh, there will be two sliding doors, but in fact just one. This is, let me measure this, this is 7 cm by 8.4 cm, so I will go with a piece of styrofoam 9 mm thick, 9.5 uh, by 8 cm, okay? And I will work on it, I will ruin it, I will paint it black uh, with plenty of uh, if it is a single because this needs to be metallic as much as possible. Also some copper here and there, some bronze ruined ores here and there. This need to be old, very old, but also very new. This is present, this is past, this is future. Oops, I said too much. See you in some seconds, let me clean everything, no, not everything, because I will need to use some more painting, but I will clean a little before adding, uh, building the sliding doors. Okay guys, 9.5 by 8 centimeters, 9.5 um, divided by 2 equals 4. 75 so 475 and 475 this need to be the middle of the two sliding doors and I will simply mark it this way Okay, look oh guys, this, this is not a file, this is simply a popsicle with a double sided tape and some, and some sandpaper on it, but it's very useful.
So from being sorry as usual, but I will try to go deeper this time. Even some scratch. I think it's enough, some black, I still need some iridescent silver and then I will paint this, let me take some iridescent silver. Okay, so let's go, I will most probably do a mess, but anyway, black, and a lot of iridescent silver. Mix. This is metallic enough. <laughs> Okay, first layer, and I will wait for it for it for dry. Then second layer, maybe a third layer or coat if you prefer. I call it layer. Someone call it a coat. Call it whatever you want. Good guys, this is the result with three layers of black and a lot of iridescent silver, and you can see how much it shine. This is the metallic effect, guys. This is a metallic effect. This iridescent silver, and I just have one more of this. So this evening I will order some more because it's so useful when you need to paint something metallic with basic colors. You simply add it and you get uh, your metallic material, okay? Now, uh, let's have some copper, but, but not like I always do, but this time dry brushing it. Okay, I generally paint the pure metallic or with my airbrush. This time I will go with some dry brushing of copper. Give this love another chance. Take my hand. And I think it will be all, guys.
Yes, not that much, just a little bit to have something different, something, some different shades. I will wait this to dry, then I will bloom it like that. Let me show you the result and this is the top and this is the top. It will be glued like that, trying to get perfectly in the middle like that guys and this will be the metallic effect with some more uh, copper added to the doors old new everything else and the groove in the middle is not that bad okay so 10 minutes then i will glue this to the building right metallic yes Good or so. Let's glue it there. This is the bottom. Tomorrow is another day. Sit around and waste away without you. Quickly done, and this is the doors glued there in the front. So now a little pause because i need to go get the box with the moss i still have it boxed somewhere and i will need from now on for some additional thing to add some moss in the front and everywhere so 10 minutes 12 minutes i will try to get the box with all the moss uh, and as always, what you need is always behind everything else. So I got some moss and some plants also. Let me make this some more interesting, guys. Okay. Good. This is what I added, guys. So far. from each side, and then also from the back there. I wanted something visible even in the background. So a little uh, tree getting down, up, then down because it is too heavy and from this side some orange too because orange on red is not that bad i will need to wait for this to try but the pvc glue will uh, get uh, transparent and so no problem at all uh, a little cleaning here and there maybe yes uh, and maybe adding some more here to hide the glue like that okay this will take some hours to become completely transparent but in the front here it is already getting transparent and this is not all obviously because here on the top is something that is still missing uh, i will certainly lose some of the moss during the the season because this is real moss guys, this is uh, uh, lichens and moss and it tends to, um, 
to dry and fall down but anyway uh, I wanted this to be seen as something there yes but also that no one's take care of or don't even think to take care of because it is too frightened to approach it and <laughs> during the final recap it will be clear why I wait for some minutes for this to dry I will put away all my moss and lichens a little of cleaning and then and then adding this that will be a top moment guys uh, but for now I will wait for some minutes to I will let the, the moss dry for some minutes see you in I don't know when good guys it has dried enough not completely but enough now here guys on top of that <laughs> drums guys will go this guys this head here and I don't know if I can show you exactly how scary this is <laughs> this was uh, modeled five months ago yes five months ago five six months ago but uh, you know that i'm always uh, honest with you this was not the first uh, the first uh, model the first model was this one guys but four days ago I noticed when I've done this that this will be and look it is it has the exact same dimension as this little spot here. But this guys is too too little to make an impression. But this was my original model. <laughs> the model is still there. I modeled this starting from a head and then adding something here and by the way I don't use a mouse for modeling I use a graphic tablet uh, to model this but this was was terrifying enough for me to get something like that building there this is the essence of that building but this was too little so I went gigantic like that sorry uh, you know that i always uh, change color uh, you have just seen me doing the, the same exact thing with the red there i always mix colors so it was very difficult to duplicate the exact same color the only thing i knew was i went with some black uh, with some uh, iridescent silver as first layer after the primer obviously because this needed absolutely to be primed and then some uh, some gray with iridescent silver and some green with iridescent silver mixed final touch some white to uh, to illuminate the eyes that are most the most frightening thing and the mouth and the nose this is absolutely what will make the difference with this building and now this is tall enough to be considered a head <laughs> I will not tell what it is but this is supposed to be as frightening as it is so this is very heavy this is 140 this little one so I didn't remodel it obviously I simply uh, enlarged the scale of what I originally modeled 
this is the maximum I can get considering the supports that needed to be added for the printing to get succeeded the maximum I can obtain with my um, resin printer maybe this should even have been bigger and taller but I don't know this is tall enough to scare people even from the distance but it is very heavy this is heavier because this is 200 grams guys this has not been hollowed originally so it's plain inside not as the poor uh, jade that uh, exploded but this is, has nothing inside but it is layer by layer poor, pure simply uh, solid resin this took seven hours to print this took nine hours to print because i hollowed it so inside it is empty and you can see that i uh, previously i um, closed the two holes so this has been printed then i have i made i three two holes to empty all the uh, resin or the liquid resin still inside then when the uh, resin was no more dripping out I resealed the uh, holes using some of my resin then a UV lamp to iron the uh, resin uh, the same lamp I used to cure the figurines now sincerely I don't want I would like not to use a uh, destructive uh, uh, way of uh, gluing this but hey, I still have this as, and this I will kept with me forever this little head but I can't go simply with two sided tape or PVC glue it is too heavy uh, so I will go with with um, no, let me see if I have this. No, this. No, I will go with um, with B component epoxy glue, my five minute glue, component A and component B. Guys, right now this is about to get finished. So component A. like this then five minutes and it will be done uh, so and I will explain the purpose of this building to who to to you guys even if the real fans know what it is and the purpose but this is one of the symbol of that book that got me forever uh, and I'm really fan of this guy this, this man, this Victorian novelist that wrote a magnificent book you know it for some other very important novel but this for me is his masterpiece and uh, I will uh, tell everything about him in some hours when I will be for now on uh, let's talk with, with um, about something else the head here is trying to drill into my mind with his no eyes his empty eyes his face but guys, see you in some minutes. Good, and my hands are very dirty. Uh, actually, they are stained with the copper paint because I just finished painting something that will be useful in just some seconds. Right now, I have 
access to the first level, the second level, and stop, and nothing more. So people will need to get access to the level 3, and the level, then to level 4. But right now, level 3 has no access at all, and villagers can't climb up to that level. A new stair. Uh, I went strange, I went steampunk, yes, I went uh, crazy as always. Taking uh, um, the starting point, taking the point from what I did last season, somehow, not entirely true, but somehow. Uh, my big uh, twin stairs from last season was very good looking. So I decided to go, yes, why not having some sort of stairs like that, not twin stairs obviously, but they can also be modeled as a twin stair, but that can also give a look of hugging people. Come on, come on, come on here, uh, let me hug you something like that and being useful so guys I decided to do this design here guys and I will approach the camera so it is a curved set a curved stairs uh, very particular that will help me do something different Please look here. Here you have space for adding a fountain, a little statue, and here this is also a wall for a park bench, for something else, for maybe a little popcorn machine, a little pretzel machine, something like that. This is pure blue, not the same till I used it for uh, the Jules Verne feature or the stairs that get access to the three ring circus but a different blue then I also have brushed so this has been painted by brush and painted using that blue plus a ton of iridescent silver because I wanted this as metallic as possible then I use my brush with some copper and also bronze it's it's reflecting the light right now it has some strange shadows the orange gold the copper everything and it shines from hell everywhere the design here some stairs go just straight like that but in order to get access to 12 centimeters need to be very long Instead, I used some more space, and this is just, I think, 10 centimeters. No, it is 14 centimeters from this wall here to this wall here. The concept here getting a 90 degrees like that, so you can see that this is straight, this is straight, so it, get, it turns 90 degrees from this point to that point, then go straight once again. When you curve something, you don't waste that much space. So, elonging this would have gone that way, a very long stair, simply because those are not 9 millimeters uh, steps, those are 6 or 7 millimeters steps, those are 7 millimeters uh, steps getting access to the 12 centimeters as always because my level are 12 centimeters so this is see not seven because seven is not is not uh, a multiple of 12 but 6.5 yes uh, yes 6.5 or 7.5 um, and this is how I intended my stair, getting up there, aviator. This will be very useful, not wasted space, but useful space. I don't know, guys. Maybe just tell me a statue 
or a little fun thing. I was thinking of some famous statue, some very, well, a couple of statues, because guys, this is from one side, then I have the twin from the other side, and those can be also joined in some sort of, uh, now it's not perfectly horizontal, but I don't care because I will not use them like that, but they will be at the opposite side of level 3, getting us from one side and from the other. But this is modular too, guys. This is somehow from here to there, my mm, twin stairs from last season. If you want, you can place also it like that. And look here, those resemble some, some uh, arms, some arms getting to uh, hug you with everything. So much more comfortable, not that scary and much more comfortable. This, imagine here having a couple of statues, then point benches, then maybe some trees and something else. This is a complete scene if I want them like that. But this can also be an alpha scene that something there, buildings, attractions, uh, um, shops, whatever you want. And then those are modular. Uh, they are symmetrical, they are specular, they cannot be uh, um, overlapped. But this is what I wanted for this new design. So 90 degrees, then straight. Uh, then 90 degrees around 8 centimeters, 8.3, 8.4, and the rest to getting access to 12 centimeters. And this can end not that uh, wide, just 3.5 centimeters, yes something more than three and a half centimeters and and then i also modeled this i don't know if, oops, if i can show you but the wall has some sort of pattern due to the infill i use it to fill the walls because this is not that heavy this is printed using my filament printer getting the maximum out from the filament printer uh, in 8 note, but in depth and in width, yes, this is 8 hours of printing and 8 hours of printing, uh, standard of printing, not very detailed, then everything else, but you are certainly saying, wow, yeah, people will fall down, and this is not that steampunk, you are right, guys, you are right, but let me bring to the scene this little guy here and some this other little guy freshly painted with copper guys maybe it's not that dry it has not that dried and these guys here is pure steampunk design please look uh, inside this is pure steampunk design some sort of a rounded flower or cross, some ripples in the balusters, etc. And this is, oops, sorry for the camera, and this is oriented at 30 degrees uh, that way. So, why different sizes? Because you don't have the same when you turn, and the inside is narrower than the outside. So, those will go up like that, step after step. And in the inside, I will go up like that with the narrowest one. And then, and then in the top where it's completely different here, uh, because it's horizontal, I will go with uh, these other ones here, one short and one long. Uh, those are long and then those are short. Those are almost the same, but they are they haven't they have no slope in here because this will be when on top you have the horizontal one like that, and those shorter are for for the side there. Okay, guys, um, 
Certainly, I will not need some baluster and, and rays here because these will be against the wall like that. Okay, guys, this will be against the wall, but up to this level here, double balusters inside and outside, then just from the outside. Right now, and this is last f f five days ago. I still didn't know how to get access. Uh, you know, I don't want the same type of stairs for each level. Um, for next level, I will try to find something else. Uh, let me try to... I don't know if it is this is enough. No, it is too big, this one. I will go with the narrow one. And I will try to start this, then I will show you the final result. Double sided tape like that. Then in here. Like that. Good guys, this is straight there. I will need to clean, but this is the result, guys. Okay, we need the balusters stopping here because here you have the wall. Same thing from the specular side. Here you got the wall, so the baluster will stop just after the last curved section. 
and these will be placed like this from one side and from the other side of the level. Uh, and that's all for this for this part here. Uh, I will put these on here, onto the uh, on top of the layer, and then I will go up with something else. Now, look who I am here. The greatest musician in all the history, okay, for my circus. I still don't know his name, someone suggested I, I need to use my name. No, I don't want to use my name, I want to use something something strange, something hini, like Houdini, like Gardini, like Gordini, like Aini, Aini. But since I don't know yet. And so Figuring without um, space uh, inside the tree ring circus, so I will need to manage something uh, for the outside. Uh, let's measure this. Maybe I will go strangely. Uh, I don't want this to be too large, otherwise too wide. Otherwise, I will not have space for anything else all around. Let's say I will go with 12 by... Twelve by 12. Let's go there, not to exaggerate, 12 by 12.
Okay guys, I think I will stop here with the stage. I need this, maybe some rabbits here and there, something pure magician. But this is my little stand for the magician, guys. Um, see you for something else. Final recap of part 17 and this time I'm all in since the beginning. I'm not hiding anything. Not true, I still have a little stage on the right, but you have to wait uh, some minutes before uh, seeing 
it. What I added in this part 17, uh, buildings, the windmill there, uh, I needed some movement in order to attract viewer attention even in that corner there where I will have so many more buildings and without movement those buildings uh, would have um, stayed in the dark. The problem there is that I have all this section that it cannot be digged in because I just have nine millimeters but it, is, it was the only way to have another small section to add some more buildings uh, in this corner here because I lack space, guys. And so it, it will be a problem for the street lamps and something more, but I will manage it, I will find a solution. Then here, when people, when people uh, get up the stairs, they come in front of another ancient building. This is not a building, this is a fountain, obviously, but this is medieval, this is uh, not, maybe 1500, 1600, but it is ancient. And, and right beside it, the masterpiece from Lemax, the masterpiece from the last 20 years. Nora's Christmas Boutique and this will be the main focus of all the village with so many more buildings with some more attraction and this is where what I wanted for um, these stairs uh, some arms hugging all this entire section from left to right there with the, uh, the this strange new uh, curved and steampunk uh, couple of stairs um, and I thought maybe some little fountain there in the corner but I already have the giant fountain there so maybe a couple of statues guys not that big because they needed to fit there in the corner but uh, sincerely a couple of or of the choose between the most famous ancient statues in the world. Obviously, those, those will be Italian or Greek or Roman. Or, I, I don't know yet, but obviously, I will try to find them. I, I, not, I will not have the time to model them. But if someone have already modeled those statues, I will add them. Otherwise, uh, I will model them very uh, quickly. Uh, oh, bam, 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 and those will be an addition. Uh, sorry, guys, uh, I could have modeled them, but I don't have time right now. <laughs> Already modeled these new stairs. And then, guys, the scary building there. It was the only spot available, I think. Not true, I could have inverted the ice in skate pond with the uh, frightening building there, the mysterious building number two, uh, this pyramid. Let's call that a pyramid, guys. I will reveal everything in some minutes. Uh, but it, it, it isn't adding anything because I will not add anything in the corner there between the scriptorium and the door port section. I will have all the fences around it and the main scene from the scriptorium will be uh, on the right there with, peop with people and the monks right there. Uh, maybe a little scene also behind the head, the giant head, but guys, this is what I wanted. I wanted uh, at least one and um, one feature dedicated to, Victor to a Victorian novelist, to a Victorian era novelist for each level. Here I have Jules Verne on the first one. On the second one, I have Mary Shelley and this Frankenstein. Then I will have Death on the third level. But obviously, I will not be able to go up there or 
in or with the scriptorium nor on top of um, North Pole section with the fourth and last feature I will go under the North Pole section right there but as I said this will be revealed as last thing before going live with my final video uh, the stairs are climbable of course guys and I told you that I uh, would uh, use them as they are and they are there I can also get this one in contact with the other one but I, I tried that but I didn't like it uh, a closer look maybe from there okay uh, I still miss some trees and some street lamps that will bring light to them but on top of that i have the scriptorium with all the world torches that will also illuminate down there before getting to the to the pyramid there here guys i remanage a little bit the things and the there it is the new stage guys Guys, I am always listening to what you say, to what you tell me in the comment. I, I'm not the keeper of the knowledge. And a suggestion comes from Robin Wright. Why don't you add a little stage with some curtain uh, stage for the magician? Here it is the magician, guys. But Robin and you guys, uh, I will not name it like... Uh, my name with my name guys sorry guys uh, I'm not a magician but this is the result not perfect I also added some border there with some um, golden uh, some sort of golden uh, cable there uh, okay and guys I know I, uh, okay, maybe I'm not perfect, but I am from a generation where they taught me everything to do everything, so uh, I can even sue. Not perfectly, but guys, uh, sorry for that. Uh, new generation, don't do that way, but I was born in the 70s, so it's a generation where... Uh, parents thought everything to their child and so I know a little of everything guys plumbing uh, electricity etc etc even wallpaper I can even uh, do uh, I can even um, glue some wallpaper on, the, on my walls if I want no, sorry guys uh, this is not a glorification of myself I'm I don't want that but this is how it will go with this round there and the background will end here then I will add some more figurines I don't have that much more figurines and then here I will not go with some new um, steampunk fences I will go with my traditional canal fences all around everything okay so let's go up uh, so I, I'm I'm uh, okay no uh, forget it I was uh, really embarrassed by talking by myself sorry guys I don't like talking about myself let's turn this a little bit to get you everything and so the scariest uh, head in history before getting everything let me add the last prop i sorry guys i destroyed some part of the of the layout no i was saying uh let me just fix the camera right here right there okay guys and then i will talk about it but before doing that, allow me to put there the last prop. This little prop that is missing will reveal everything for the ones who didn't figure it out uh, very recently. This little prop goes 
right there. This is one of the things I modeled in March, April. Mm, that I kept a secret, I still have some of them left, but the one, the biggest one was the head there. This is nothing more, nothing else than the Morlock Sphinx. What is the Morlock Sphinx? It is the, uh, the main characteristic building from a well-known book. This book is the Time Machine from Herbert George Wells, H.G. Wells. Victorian era novelist, very famous. Maybe you remember him uh, mostly for another big success, War of the Words, that recently had a movie with uh, Tom Cruise, but also a very, very, very famous radio shows radio show from the 40s where they um, they they played on radio the same uh, almost the same exact plot as in the book with aliens uh, with aliens uh, um, uh, attacking the earth and then that caused a panic among the population in the 40s. But that was another book. I think, at least for me, that this book, The Time Machine, is much more better than uh, War of the Lord, uh, War of the Words. Uh, what is here that is steampunk? The Time Machine, guys. Look at the Time Machine copper. Uh, uh, nothing else than a little uh, uh, chair as uh, for, for the uh, main character to go through time. And then this is pure 19, 19, 19, 91. The book is, um, is focused on the first, on the last year of. Uh, 1800th century and first year, the, the eve between 1899 and 1900. So, a very, a very particular New Year Eve there, when there is a passage from one century to another. Time Machine, why I love that book? Because it is a ferocious criticizing criticism of uh, Victorian era society guys the Morlocks were the bad guys in the book and also in the movie they lived underground uh, in on some cave under the surf under the earth's surface and uh, they used the the other species, the e Eloys, as food. Those big giant horns, those big giant horns, whistling horns, were used to attract the Eloys that were very naive. And this, guys, is set, yes, in the last year of 1800, but also 1800 thousands years in the future <laughs> gigantic guys and so why it is a criticism of uh, victorian year because the powerful always controlled the the rich the powerful always controls the poor the uh, the poor and uh, other people so it, it was written in plain in plain uh, Victorian era, uh, or maybe in the last uh, uh, year, so Victorian era, where the uh, the control of everyone was in the hands of just uh, a little bunch of people. And I will not continue because I am not here to comment a book. Uh, a fantastic book is one of my favorite books of all the times, but 
but I have read the thousands of books, guys. So I I don't know, but uh, read 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 the book before uh, taking before uh, watching the movie, guys. And I'm not uh, talking about recent 2001 movie, The Time Machine, but a masterpiece, another masterpiece with Rod Taylor and the 1960 movie. But read read the book, please. It is depicted, uh, it is uh, um, the best way to understand Edward George Wells in uh, his mind, his way of thinking and uh, just keep in mind that this is called uh, the Morlock Sphinx because the Sphinx has always always been a symbol of uh, riddles and and Wells wanted the song to leave the uh, the reader with a riddle. Uh, am I talking about the present, the past, or the future? But it was talking about the future, obviously, but also about its present time. Uh, at least it is how I feel this book, guys. Uh, and uh, uh, nothing else, guys. <laughs> this is not uh, this is not a video about books and movies. This is a, a video about my part seventeen, and uh, that's all. But if you have a question, please. <laughs> Don't hesitate, ask me. And also comment if you like it, if you don't like it, if you hate me because I added such a building, such a destroying building to the happiness of uh, Christmas Village. But this is how I want to go this year. Mm, Jules Verne and uh, Mary Shelley weren't that disturbing. This may disturb some of you because Morlocks were anthropophagus, were cannibals. When the search of something better in the future is not that good, the time machine. I'm sorry guys if my final recap was a little confused, but I didn't want to annoy you with some arguments you maybe you aren't interested in, uh, but this book it's not a science fiction, guys. It is a critique of a criticism of a Victorian era society before uh, before being a science fiction book, one of the uh, masterpieces of science fiction. Uh, finally, <laughs> the layout is not that empty anymore. It's starting to get. An, an aspect, uh, this aspect, no, uh, the aspect of a mini Christmas village. The circus will be overpopulated in the next uh, few days. I will try to place every and single one of the remaining figurines for part 18, then some more buildings. I will speed up right now. Uh, I will not start the for the feature because it is already started, it is in that corner there where you can see it and it will be a big surprise, I worked yesterday evening on adding some very little tiny uh, lights in some key points but shh, don't tell anyone, it will it'll be a secret and also I am uncomfortable talking, to, talking about me when I talked about this video stage. And guys, I always appreciate all of your comments. Tim, uh, sorry, Robin Wright suggested me this video stage for the magician. Why not? Yes, go ahead. L let's go with the stage. And this is my way of doing it. Maybe not perfect, but it's a way. And this is not Sylvia the magician, guys. It is something with a mini. Uh, Houdini, like Houdini, like Gandini, something like that. Maybe I should do a poll with some names and mm, ask you to choose a forename. Or maybe you can suggest some ma magician, very important magician and names. Uh, so thank you for your suggestions as always. 
part 18 uh, will be I will add many more buildings to in part 18 uh, I am also sorry if I will add for next part something I didn't made like the, the two statues I want there because it will take me to model them correctly it will take almost two weeks to model them correctly basically and I don't have two weeks uh, I don't have a sentence right now and that's all guys I haven't done mu too much but but as always, please don't forget to subscribe, comment and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching, thank you for bearing my awful English and see you next time, but only if you really wish it. Bye guys.